Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome to another one of my Asana training videos. And in this video, I wanna give you 10 tips for how to communicate more effectively with your team in Asana. Now, if you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like some one-on-one -on -one help setting up or reviewing your Asana account, learning how to take full advantage of this tool and getting your team to fully adopt Asana, then click the link in the description below to learn more about our Asana consulting options. Now, my first tip is to make sure you are posting your comments in Asana in the correct place. If you're newer to Asana, you may not realize there's actually a few places we can communicate. Firstly, inside a task here on the right-hand side, this is actually my task for this video that I'm recording right now. If I go to the bottom, each task has an area where I can comment. And each task or in my project here is kind of like a separate comment thread. So if I want to ask a question or follow up with somebody on my team, the first thing I need to do is make sure I'm commenting on the correct task. If I'm following up about this video that I'm working on, I would obviously do that here in this task. So I could say, uh, at Judy, this is going to be published on Wednesday instead. So I'm gonna write my comment there. And by at mentioning Judy, I'm gonna loop Judy into the conversation and I'm posting my comment here on this task. Now actually, because I have various subtasks in here as well, it might be more appropriate that for some of my comments, like maybe I, I wanna talk specifically about this thumbnail, I could click into this subtask and now I could post a comment here and I could say, at Judy, at Judy, please use an image with an emoji. I don't know, I'm kind of, making something up. So now by by uh, by posting here specifically on this subtask, I'm keeping my conversation nested within the appropriate kind of body of work so that when Judy clicks on this task, I'm gonna assign this to her, she sees the comment related to this, this subtask that she's working on, whereas this comment is more about the task as a whole, so I'm gonna keep that at the parent level. Now, as well as being able to post on a, a task or comment on a task, I should say, we also have the messages area of the project. And the use case for the, the messages area is for if I'm posting an update or a question more about the project as a whole, I would do that here at the project level. So you see, I've actually put some YouTube guidelines in here because these guidelines aren't really specific to any one particular uh, video or task. Um, I'm, I'm keeping it at the project level. So I could post an update and say, you know, change to schedule. And I could say, you know, YouTube videos will now be published on Wednesdays. And down here, it's gonna show me who on my team is gonna be notified and I can then click send. So now I'm posting a, a project level discussion uh, or, or comment that's related to the project as a whole. And then finally, I can, if I need to, comment or, or post a message on the entire team. So if I click on my team here in the sidebar and go to the messages area, I could now, uh, let's just do a test. And I'll just put some dummy text in here. I could now share this, this message with the entire team and it's gonna show you who on the team is gonna be notified. So this message now is not specific to a task. It's not even specific to a project. It's just going out to everyone in this Asana team. As a general rule of thumb though, you want to try and comment at the most granular level. So if I need to follow up about a specific task or piece of work, I'm gonna use the task comments. But if it's just a general update to my team, I would use the team messages area. So that's the first tip is to make sure you're putting your comments and your messages in the correct place. My next tip is before you post any message or comment, particularly on a task, is to check who the collaborators are because that's gonna tell you who's gonna get notified about your comment or your message. So if I come down to the bottom of my task here, you can see the collaborators are myself and Judy. I'm a collaborator because this is assigned to me and uh, I've, I've added Judy as a collaborator down here. Now, if I want to, I could add Warwick on my team Let's put him as a collaborator. And so now if I post a comment, Judy and Warwick will both be notified about that message. And that leads me nicely into tip number three, which is to at mention people who you want to loop into the conversation 
if they're not already a collaborator. So I can see Judy and Warwick are already collaborators. I've just manually added them down here, but I can type the at symbol and mention a person and say, what do you think of this? And if you watch what happens to the collaborators, now, because I've at mentioned Haley, I have added her as a future collaborator. So she will get notified about comments and updates to this task. Tip number four, now that I have multiple people looped in on this conversation or, or collaborating on this task, is to use the at mention feature to direct your comment at a particular person. So if I need to comment specifically at Warwick, I'm gonna at mention Warwick and say, uh, can you please check this? And that's gonna direct my comment at that person. The nice thing about using that at mention feature is for the person being mentioned, when they go to their inbox, where they can see all the updates and comments that they're being uh, looped in on, is they can then filter their inbox and look at things they've been mentioned on. So I can quickly get to the comments where people are specifically at mentioning my name because those are generally people who are talking to me specifically with a question or an update. Tip number five is a really useful one, which is if somebody posts a comment, click the like button. So I can do that either here from the inbox or if I go down to my message in my thread, I can click the like button here. And that tells the other person or it indicates to them that I have seen their comment, that I'm happy with it, I've seen it. And for Lindsay in this case, it removes any mystery around, has Paul seen it? Is he gonna do anything about it? By liking that comment, she knows that I've seen it. And I, I highly recommend making this a team convention, making sure everyone on your team follows this rule where if you see a comment, once you've seen it, just click that like button to acknowledge that you've seen it. And it makes, it keeps everyone in the loop so we know that people are seeing things. Tip number six, similar to my last one, is when you receive a new task from someone is to click the like button on the entire task. So in this case, Lindsay has assigned this task to me. I'm here in my inbox and I've been notified about this. I can then click the like button up here, or I can actually use one of these suggested responses. I can say, thanks, I'm on it, and quickly respond back. I, I actually prefer just clicking the like button rather than having to post a comment, but again, Liking the task tells the person who assigned it to you, number one, I've seen it, I'm happy with the date, I understand the task. And it just again tells them that there's no, there's no mystery around has Paul seen it, is he gonna do it? If I need to, I can comment back in the comments down here if I have questions or maybe Lindsay didn't provide enough detail, I can comment back. But just by clicking that like button, it tells Lindsay that I've seen it and I'm onto it. Tip number seven is to pin important comments to the top of a thread. And a really useful way to use this is when completing a task, you can comment to provide some kind of evidence or feedback around how the task was actually completed. It's a nice way of closing the task and showing this is what I did to actually complete this task. So in the case of this uh, video that I'm working on, what I might say is say, uh, this video has been published and can be found here. And then I'll put in, you know, I'll put in the link when it's done. So I would comment, and then if I click on the down arrow, I can pin this to the top. So if there's a long conversation happening uh, and, and Asana's gonna truncate the comments, it's not gonna show me every single comment, I can pin this to the top. And again, really useful way, particularly when closing out a task and marking this as done, really useful way of showing this is how the work was completed. This is where you can now go and find this post or article or whatever it is that I'm, I'm doing. Tip number eight is if you need to provide more detailed feedback or uh, you need to answer someone's question in a more detailed way and maybe typing out a response is gonna take too long or you just wanna provide a lot more detail is you can use the record a video option in Asana. I can see my picture in picture now. I can choose whether I want to record just my screen my camera, if I just want to talk to the camera, or maybe both, my screen and my camera. I can choose which webcam and microphone I want to use, and then I can start recording. I really like using this if I'm providing feedback or updating somebody about a task, I can uh, click that record button and I can communicate a lot more information in a video and often a lot quicker than simply typing out my response. Tip number nine is to make sure you and members of your team are checking your inbox regularly throughout the day. You need to be checking it at least sort of two or three times a day to keep up to date with updates to tasks and of course those important comments and messages that are coming in. 
So here I am, here's my inbox in the sidebar. Personally, I like to go to the bottom first. I like to uh, deal with the oldest notifications first. I can then respond in my comments down here if I have a, a question to answer or I wanna provide some kind of update. And then the most important thing, once I have dealt with a notification, is to archive that notification to remove it from my inbox. You're not archiving the task or changing the task in any, in any way. You're simply removing that notification from the inbox now that you've dealt with it. And so I would keep going through like this, responding to my comments or updating tasks as needed until I get to inbox zero. This is what I want to, or this is where I would need to get a couple of times a day. This means I'm now up to date with all of my tasks and updates. And now when new notifications come in, it's obvious that they're new and they're not gonna get mixed up with all the old notifications. And my final tip is if you are receiving emails either from external parties, people you communicate with who aren't in Asana, or even people from your own team, and maybe they emailed you instead of uh, commenting in Asana, is you can forward these emails to Asana to create a task. So if I forward this to x at mail.asana.com, this is a request from a client around he needs some help with an automation. I can rename the subject here. I could say respond to Neil about automation. And then the uh, body of the task and any attachments will now go into Asana. So let's click send on that. And so here's what the task looks like once it arrives in Asana on my My Tasks page. It's arrived in the recently assigned section. You can see the subject of the email is the name of the task. It's been assigned to me and I can see the body of my email here. From here, if I want, I could add this to a project. I could set the due date for when I want to uh, you know, deal with this task. And this is a really nice way of taking emails that you've received and turning them into actionable tasks in Asana. So there we go. Those are my top tips for improving communication in Asana with your team. Feel free to share this video internally so that other members of your team are following the same best practices. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. And as I said, if you would like one-on-one -on -one help setting up and getting more out of your Asana account, click the link in the description below to learn more about our consulting options. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.